Hey, Cypher here. I've talked a lot about wars you've never heard of on this channel. It's somewhat of a passion of mine. This year marks a turning point for another American small war, one in which I've actually participated in, Afghanistan. We began fighting there in 2001, and it is now 2017. Hell, I was in middle school when this thing began, fought in it almost a decade later, and it is still a current event. This kind of protracted conflict is something America's memory doesn't have. We cannot remember a longer war. And depending on your definition, this year marks its becoming the longest war in American history. So let's look at what the other contenders are. This is a thorny subject though. Not only because it is about warfare, duh, but it's also extremely complex and nuanced. I did a couple of episodes ago talking about American violence in general and American small wars specifically. You can see in these that war is not so easily defined. But history is an ambiguous subject and it is difficult to give easy answers. So let's start with declared wars. We've actually only had five of them. 1812, Mexico, Spain, World War I, and World War II. The American Civil War was actually never declared since declaring a war on the Confederacy would mean recognizing them as a separate entity. The Constitution didn't exist during the American Revolution, so there was no way of declaring anything. And that leaves World War II as our longest declared war, with a whopping three and a half years. Okay, but we know there's a heck of a lot more to war than just declared ones. How about the revolution itself? It began in 1775 and ended with a peace treaty in 1783. That's eight and a half years of undeniable warfare. It is undoubtedly our longest full-scale war, and also our first. All other wars discussed after this point were reduced scale for one reason or another. They also get hazier and hazier in definition. The next easiest to look at is Vietnam. It's weird, but we'll be getting worse from here on. No one can really say when the beginning was because we had military advisors there since World War II in varying capacities. We ratcheted up from there. The advisors increased in number over the years, but without combat capabilities. At least until President Kennedy assigned the Green Berets to go there in 1962. This was the beginning of official combat operations, but there had been things beforehand, such as CIA-sanctioned assassinations. But even in 1962, the Green Berets were really only there to render assistance to local forces. US-led warfare did not begin until after the Gulf of Tonkin incident in 1964, and those operations ended in 1973, when the US officially pulled out. That we today have concluded an agreement to end the war and bring peace with honor in Vietnam and in Southeast Asia. Some date the end of the war to 1975 when North Vietnam took over South Vietnam, but the US had ended the war almost three years prior to that. I tend to go with the 1962 date as the beginning and 1973 as the end, making the Vietnam War 11 years long. Then we have the Philippine insurrection, which I've done an entire episode on already. It could be said to have only lasted between 1899 and 1903, but the Moro War was another side of that war that is too often considered a separate war. The army certainly didn't see it as such, and they continued their brutal tactics there until 1914. That makes it 15 years long. Finally, we get to Afghanistan. But we aren't ending here, no siree. But let's deal with a bit of a problem here first. NATO is officially no longer in charge of the Afghanistan war. That part of the war ended in 2014. Today marking the end of their 13-year combat mission. But more than 13,000 troops, most of them American, will remain as they transition to a supporting role. One could say that the war ended back then, hence why you haven't heard about the war on the news anymore. Power over operations has been handed over to the Afghani government. That doesn't mean that Americans stop fighting there. As of writing this, there are nearly 10,000 American troops there. 33 have been killed since the handover. If you consider the war to be ongoing, then this is the 16th year of combat operations. So that's it, right? 16 years is our longest war. Never mind the oddities, that's a good enough answer in and of itself, right? Nope. Now we get to the truly weird stuff. One interesting possibility is Iraq. 
I know somebody's already saying, Dude, come on, that started in 2003 and ended in 2010, but it's not as cut and dry as that. We tend to forget that we imposed a no-fly zone over Iraq and maintained it militarily from the end of the Persian Gulf War all the way to the beginning of the Iraq War. We continuously made military incursions into their borders throughout that time. President Clinton considered assassinating Saddam Hussein. Over the long term, the best way to address that threat is through a government in Baghdad, a new government that is committed to represent and respect its people, not repress them. There was some gunfire exchanged periodically. So if you consider that continuous and include the Gulf and Iraq wars, then you could say that the Ba'athist conflict was a full 19 years long and would therefore be longer than Afghanistan. But that's too uncertain of a definition. So instead, let's talk about Nicaragua. The US has invaded the place more times than I care to count. We started invading in 1909. The US has had a rather messy relationship with them ever since William Walker filibustered the place in 1855. In 1912, the US Marines began an occupation that might outdo the Afghanistan war. It was more of a protectorate status, actually at the request of the Nicaraguan government, but it evolved into being more involved. And we were there mostly to protect US assets. And we controlled Nicaragua until 1933. Seriously, 21 years of occupation. Of course, this was not really a war per se, just military governorship, but there were periodic rebellions. It turned into a long-term occupation because of President Wilson demanding it, since he was such a great president. <coughs> nope, can't say it, not even as a joke. At one point in 1925, the US pulled out just to be sent back in again less than a year later. Eventually, it became too much of a bloodbath for the meager amount of Marines there. Plus, the Great Depression had hit, and we just couldn't afford these kinds of wars for a while. There were two other long-term occupations at that time. One in Haiti from 1915 to 1934, and then across the same island to the Dominican Republic in 1916 to 1924. They were more Wilson interventions because he was never satisfied with killing enough people, but none of those were as long as Nicaragua. But since they were more occupations than actual wars, it's kind of hard to define them as wars. But if you define them as a war, then that's 21 years, much longer than Afghanistan. But there's a few even longer possible wars depending on your definition. Next is the African Slave Trade Patrol. After the US outlawed the importing of African slaves in 1815, we joined forces with the British to try and prevent slave traders from making the transatlantic trip. Because once they had made it across the Atlantic, they were more difficult to discern from legal slavery. Beginning in 1819 and going through to the Civil War, a blockade was imposed on Western Africa. It was highly ineffectual, but it would often end up fighting with the slavers on the open ocean. After the Civil War began, the British continued the blockade until 1870. Since it was merely a blockade, it might not count as a war, but the US was continuously involved for 41 years. 41 years of blockading one of the shores of the second largest continent on Earth is weird enough, but even weirder was the Yangtze River Patrol. Several nations who were involved in the Second Opium War started patrolling the most important trade route in China after the war. And yes, the United States were involved in the Second Opium War. That river patrol would often get into little fights, and it was continuously operated for nearly a century. The Boxer Rebellion of 1900 was merely a blip in its timeline. In 1922, it even became an official naval squadron of the US, after having increasing skirmishes with locals. By the 1930s, with the onset of the Chinese Civil War and the Second Sino-Japanese War, this squadron saw increasing combat. It became a huge mess in 1937 when the Japanese attacked and sank the USS Pan Am. When suddenly, planes appear. The ship has been bombed by Japanese Navy planes. The call to battle stations and the Panay crew rushes to defend their craft against the sudden, unwarranted, unheard of attack. 
it got really bad on the eve of the US joining World War II when some soldiers from the Japanese and American sides accidentally fired at each other in Shanghai. The US pulled out in 1941, mere months before Pearl Harbor. So that could be the longest war, depending on your definition. It started in the 1850s and continued until 1941, almost a century long. At last, let's just briefly mention some simmering American Indian conflicts. Many tribes that interacted with the US were in this state of pseudo-war that was constantly simmering. The Cherokee were kind of one of the first of these. From the beginning of the revolution all the way through 1795, there were a number of incidents that could be classified as continuous warfare. That's 30 years. Then there were the Comanche, whose conflict was inherited from the Mexicans. They had been raiding the Spanish since the late 17th century, and as a separate tribe were kind of created out of warfare. And they continued to raid Americans all the way until the 1870s. The US was involved from 1835 until 1877, which is 32 years. There are others, but the list would be way too long to name off. Plus the Comanche and the Cherokee are the longest of them. But then, you can also think about the Indian Wars as a whole, combining them into one coherent entity. Which would mean that they were continuous from 1776 to 1924. That would be the longest on the entire list, being almost 150 years of continuous warfare. But lumping all Indian nations into one overall organization is also a very strange thing to do. So yeah, Depending on your definition, Afghanistan is now our longest war. So what do you think? Is Afghanistan now the longest war in American history? Or is it a different war? Leave a comment. Maybe there's some sort of long-term conflict I'm missing on this list. Tell me in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe while you're at it. I'll see you next time.